Hey everybody, it is Thomas and Brian back again for yet another uh, bi-weekly Q and is it bi bi-weekly? Is that like every two weeks or I is that so. twice a week? I think it's both. I think it's an ambiguous term. Bi-weekly insinuate. Uh, it seems to bi imply that it's twice a week. I think it's once every two once weeks. Once every two weeks, right? Bi-weekly payments are not paying twice a week. Right, but I think it's like technically the term terminology goes both ways. Starting off on a really relevant note, by the way. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. Asking the real questions here. Yes. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. I see we have a lot of people already uh, already uh, coming out here. Uh, take a quick quick second in the chat and let us know where you're joining us from because that always kind of tickles us when we when we hear where everyone uh, is from yeah it's it's really cool to see how far like our reach is like everybody we've had people from all over the world which is just crazy to me yeah nuts yeah let us know in the chat how you doing man i'm good feeling pretty good feeling strong yep that's good that's that's, that's good. what i do i like to feel strong um we <laughs> we we felt pretty strong the other day when I had uh, those neighbors come over to help us with that extremely large, heavy thing. Oh man, that was I was I was sore for like two days. Like you said, like your forearms. My forearms were done. Yeah, it was tough. Like just the grip strength required to hold on to that and then maneuver it. Yeah, we, my leg was fine miraculously. We moved several very heavy things for future videos. Yeah, which you're gonna love. Yes, but it was it was tough. We, we came out uh, a little worse for wear on that one. Yeah, it was not good. My house turned out fine, though. Yeah, you know I what I think we the did? last time we... Little to no damage. Yeah, last time we did anything like that, we poked a couple holes yeah, in yeah. the walls. Surprisingly, it went a little smoother this yeah. time. With less people moving. Yes, Maybe that, that might even be the key. Yeah, less less cooks in the kitchen on that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it was some really, really cool stuff that we moved into your, into your little... Uh, we got some wicked lounge. awesome stuff coming. Yeah, yeah, it's really exciting. So uh, oh. uh, that's that's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, I'm still feeling a little sore. I'm not not just because I went back to the, to the gym yesterday for the first time. Congratulations, in like, Brian. It's been like three months, and yeah. I feel like I got hit by a truck. It's the worst. It's the worst. I'm, I'm in terrible shape today, and I'm like just getting over a cold too, so excuse me if I make weird sounds throughout this thing, you know, trying to not, anyway. Uh, but overall, we're very excited to be here. Happy to get to your questions. Let's have a look and see where some of you are watching from. We've got a big list here. Holy. Scotland, Chicago, England, Pennsylvania, Washington, uh, Karachi, Pakistan. No kidding. That's awesome. Texas, Saskatchewan, uh, Baltimore, uh, I'm from Derby in England. Derby. North Carolina, Oregon, Oregon. Philippines, 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 England, Chicago, Sweden. Uh, Yay. more Chicago. Where we got some Chicago? We have to go to Chicago and we'll do a road trip one time. Yeah. Uh, Massachusetts, USA, Ontario, Philippines, California, Harling Harlingen, Texas, Singapore, Calgary, Indonesia, BC, Alberta. Indonesia? Bur yeah. Take me in. Port, <laughs> Port Dover, New Jersey, Minnesota, India. Carrick Fergus, Northern Ireland. Wow. Wilmington, North Carolina. Cali, two Cali's. Alaska, West Kelowna, Tracy, UK, and Cornwall. Holy Indiana. Brampton. Oh, there's there's so many. It does it. Hey, Brampton. I used to live in Brampton. I yeah. got stopped in the park there once. <laughs> Greece. And at the store anytime I've gone. <laughs> Greece, India, Netherlands. Uh, wow. Wow. F Florida. Welcome from all over the place. Seriously, guys, that is incredible. Any of you that live near a reef, like in Indonesia, I am seriously jealous. And yeah. uh, maybe go take selfies underwater uh, with the corals and send them to me. That's and, a good idea. And maybe if you've got one of those underwater like pens or something, you can write like, hi, Thomas. <laughs> and then... And then email it to Brian at BigAls.ca. And then we'll, we'll put it on the next We'll put it on the next That's a great idea. If you live near a reef, do that. Yeah. Or just even fish underwater. That's, we need to start this. Yes, yeah, yeah. Take pictures with like, keep on tanking or hi Thomas or something underwater with the aquatic life around you. Don't drown while you're doing it. Yeah, and let the, <laughs> let's think of like, a, what, what can we hashtag that with so we can find them? If they post it on social, we can find hashtag them. keep on tanking. Hashtag keep on tanking. Yeah, sure, yeah. okay, let's do that. Uh, all right, guys. Well, that sounds like a really wicked idea, and I'm on board for that 100%. Let's, let's do questions. All right, let's get to questions, questions finally. Uh, okay, uh, just a, a very quick little, as we usually like to say, if your question is very, very specifically about your fish and a problem it's having, we'll do our best. He'll do his best to answer it. If not, we will link you to our support team, uh, our office support team, who will be able to uh, take a uh, deeper and, dive. Yeah, we got to ask you a bunch of questions, figure yeah. out all kinds of stuff about your system. It's usually a discourse, a back and forth, so we can drill down to the exact problem and issue and how we can solve it for you. I can, uh, you know, do my best to answer the question um, in supposes, but yes. uh, ultimately I'll probably tell you to take that question to the support team so that we can make sure we get you the right answer rather than just me guessing. 
Productimundo. Okay, so uh, with all that said, guys, uh, also uh, hit that like button right off the bat. Uh, yes. Th that would be very helpful. Uh, share the stream if you want with people. Also mm -hmm. very helpful. With all that said, let's get to questions. That's the whole reason we're here. Yay! Uh, so, uh, very first one uh, that is available. Uh, my, guppy, my guppy feces is red. Is that a problem? Not necessarily. Actually, uh, a lot of fish in your tank could have a reddish brown or bright red poop, depending on the food you are feeding them. If the food has a lot of carotenoids in it, which a lot of color enhancing tropical fish flakes and sticks and the like have, or krill, etc., um, you are going to find that your fish are going to poop red because what they are eating is red and it is also going to come out red. So yeah, I would say it's probably not an issue, especially if you're feeding uh, flakes that have a lot of carotenoid or any fish food with a lot of carotenoids in it. So I wouldn't worry too much. If you are feeding a food that does not have any real amount of carotenoids, I mean, it could be indicative of an issue, but uh, it's hard to say. Usually the things we're looking for in fish poop in terms of issues would be um, like clear stringy poop or white poop that can sometimes be uh, internal parasites and stuff like that. That said, if you want to reach out to our support, if you have pictures or if you don't feed any foods that are uh, uh, red in any way, shape or form or have carotenoids, we can try to help figure out what's going on, but we might need to see what you're seeing and ask you some questions. Yeah. So I'll link that support email down below. Uh, hi, I've currently just started setting up fish tanks and, nice. and learning different tips about how to maintain them. But what would you say the key things are when performing maintenance on tanks? Oh, top, we've got, I've, I've done a couple top tens um, that kind of address this sort of issue. Brian will find the top 10 do nots for us and top 10 aquarium habits. Um, good habits. Uh, both of those videos are a great watch. It's kind of just my general, um, responses to a lot of questions that I've gotten over the years uh, and a lot of them have to do with the absolute basics and things you can do to uh, avoid potential disaster. Um, I will say that things like the top 10 uh, do not list, there are some things in there that can be done safely if you know what you're doing, but avoiding them is just a lot easier if you're newer to the aquarium hobby. So um, you'll see in the comments, some people are like, hey, I do that all the time and it's not an issue, but uh, they're there for a reason. And it's because for somebody who's newer, it takes a lot of risk out of the situation that could potentially be there. So um, I think one of the best habits you can have when performing maintenance on your tank, uh, other than I think the number one is just do the maintenance, like test your water and do maintenance. That's the one of the most important things you can do. But something that is less obvious is uh, the biological media in your filter, whether or not you've got a hang on filter that has like little stones for biomedia or just has a foam brick for biomedia or um, you've got a canister with dedicated biomedia in it. Do not wash your biomedia um, in tap water, especially any water that's got chlorine. It's best to take a little bit of water from the aquarium and rinse it off in that. You don't need to get it perfectly clean. You just want to dislodge any debris on the outside of the media that could be suffocating the back, uh, bacteria that's been colonizing that media and just getting all the mom and junk out of it. And you can just do that, like I said, in a little bit of water from the tank, put the media in that, rustle it around so it all gets dislodged and put it back. So that way you don't accidentally kill the biological media in your filter, which is doing 99.999% of the actual work in terms of making sure that your water is safe for your fish. What's doing the other 0.1% or 0.01%? Chemical media um, does a small bit and uh, uh, mechanical media just for like crud that's floating around in the tank. But your biological, like the thing that actually makes your water really safe is your, your biological. Because what it's doing is it's taking all the waste, uh, which turns into ammonia. And ammonia is uh, severely toxic and very caustic. So it also burns. Um, so it's taking that ammonia and breaking it down into safer elements like nitrate, which um, don't harm fish really, uh, unless they get very high numbers or you've got extremely uh, sensitive fish. So having some nitrate versus any ammonia is much better. And then what we do water changes for is to take that nitrate out so it doesn't build up to a level that becomes uncomfortable for your fish. Yeah. yeah that's good. like, that's like, yeah. That's the basics. 
But I link, I link Aquar- how how not to kill your aquarium one on one. I link those videos for you as well, just so you can watch. They're good those. watches. Yeah, yeah, they're they're useful. So I uh, check those out as well. I put them in the chat. I think isn't the top ten like our most viewed video? It's got a one million one hundred twenty three thousand views right now. Yeah, I'm so glad I made that video. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was a good one. Ah, uh, that's right, well, was that our first video to hit a mill? We're done making videos. Uh, yeah, no, that was the first one, the only one so far. I think actually. That's that's flattering. And and uh, the top ten uh, good habits is uh, just over a hundred thousand, like hundred eight. That's 000. awesome. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad people are finding it useful. Useful vids. Uh, next up, which substrate is more long lasting, Tropica or Amazonia? I couldn't tell you because I haven't used um, the ADA Amazonia. I think it's ADA that makes Amazonia, uh, but they will eventually do the same thing. I believe they're both pelleted soils, so they're both over time going to go from pellet form to just mud. Uh, that's just going to happen, and there's nothing really you can do to stop it. Um, it's not necessarily a terrible thing. Uh, it's just a thing. I think, I honestly think the reason they pelleted it, or pellet soil, um, is so that it's easier to work with initially in the aquarium. I don't think they do it intending for it to stay that way forever. Because if you ever take one of those pellets out, you can literally just squish it between your fingers and it turns to dust. So the intention is definitely not for it to stay that way forever. Right. Again, I, I'm just going off of com, like my common sense, my idea of what common sense is anyways. But yeah, no, I think um, they're both very viable substrates. Obviously, Amazonia has a lot of use, especially uh, in Europe, and it's becoming very popular in Canada as well uh, and the US. But I think you're, you're going to be fine either way. They're both solid planted sub- substrates from two companies that are known for caring about plants and making planted aquariums rock. So you're not going to go wrong. And also, the Tropica uh, soil is made in Japan. That's pretty cool. Sweet, I guess. Why yeah. is that? Why is that a? Uh, I'm pretty sure the ADA stuff's also made in Japan. Why is that a bonus? Why are you? Why is that a big deal? Well, it's coming from the same place that, like Takashi Amano, which is a lot of people regard as like one of the very first um, true talented aquascapers. Gotcha. Um, coming out of the same place, man. I see. So it's got to be good. Okay. I, w- I would think so. Unless they've, unless ADA is actually made somewhere else. Which <laughs> no, no sense to me. But yeah. All right. Uh, hey guys, question. I have the current USA loop lighting system on my tank and I'm getting a lot of green algae. I have two algae eaters in the tank, but they won't touch it. Lights have been off for a week. Green algae? Green algae and the algae eaters won't touch it. What kind of algae eaters do you have? Um, I digress. Turn the light down. If you if you have live plants, um, you can still turn it down depending on what plants you've got. But either way, the plants aren't photosynthesizing if you have them uh, well enough to outcompete the algae. Uh, so either way, I would just turn the lighting down. Um, manually remove as much of the algae as you can. You can even, once you scrub it all off, get some filter floss, stick that in your filter, and it should attach to that. Uh, you should be pulling out some pretty green filter floss when you're done. But yeah... Uh, Algae eaters are going to eat algae in different ways at different rates. They'll have preferences for what type of algae they're eating. Not all algae eaters are are the same in terms of their diligence. Uh, For instance, Chinese algae eaters uh, and Siamese algae eaters. But Chinese algae eaters are a pretty good example. When they're young, they do a pretty good job. Um, But they very quickly grow fast and to a decent size. And then they become far less useful and much more aggressive. Uh, it, for me, I find some of the most productive algae eaters are young um, bristlenose plecos, bushy-nose plecos, uh, plecos and cistrus species. Uh, I also don't mind Siamese algae eaters. I find they do a pretty good job. Um, and autosynclus catfish, if you've got planted tanks, they can do a fantastic job, especially for plant leaves and stuff. Um, you, you just got to make sure, obviously, with whatever algae eaters you're getting, that you're also offering whatever else they may need in their diet to thrive and not just relying on them to survive solely off of the algae in your tank. Uh, there are also snails, which are options, and they can be much better algae eaters than some fish can. So, All right, I'm planning on doing a planted tank. I'm just wondering when cycling... Oh, by the way, the last question was from John B., who is a, a huge follower it comes to Yay. every single stream so yeah john, john b is actually john b thank you so much uh sorry uh, i'm planning on doing a planted tank i'm just wondering when cycling am i going to be able to detect when am i going to be able to detect ammonia or are the plants going to absorb it before i can test it if that's the case how if that's the case how do i know when my tank is cycled 
when you okay so one thing you're gonna have to do you have to if you're just like got your planet tank set up and filled with water and you're running everything you're gonna have to constantly add a food source uh that will decay and break down and become waste to feed the bacteria in the aquarium uh to start that cycle will the plants interfere with that to some degree um i don't think plants are going to absorb ammonia at a rate that um, is going to make it undetectable or prevent the tank from cycling um, they will probably uptake quite a bit of uh, nitrate and phosphate from the water as, as it moves over. So you shouldn't necessarily get a ton of algae or anything or register a lot of nitrates. But what you're really looking for is the presence of ammonia to start. So you're going to add food to the tank on a daily or, you know, every other day basis um, or a source of ammonia. Some people use like just straight up liquid ammonia. Um, and then as... Again, you want to be careful, especially if you're using liquid ammonia, because you don't want to fry the plants. But as you start to register ammonia, you want to keep it within a safe, safe range, which it'll say on your test kit where it is safe. You don't want it to go crazy high. Um, so once you're registering ammonia, you start also testing for nitrite. If you have a nitrite test kit and uh, nitrate, the ammonia should go down. Uh, even though you continuously add food, you know, and stuff to the tank, it should be going down over the course of about two weeks. Uh, until ammonia is practically zero or is not registering on the test kit and you have a presence of nitrate um, because everything you put into the tank the that's turning to ammonia should very quickly be converted by the bacteria in the tank to nitrate so that's what will be present ammonia not so much that's when you know your cycle's over and it's it's time to add some fish good answer bro i try i just learned something too awesome so whenever That's I a get, fishless cycle. Whenever I, whenever I get around to setting these up, I'll be able to use that information. You know what? One of these days, Brian, you should probably do that. How long have you had those tanks? Oh, ages now. Yep. Collecting dust. Get on it. Uh, you know what? I'm intimidated. I'll be straight with you. I'm a little intimidated to, to do it. Uh... I don't he know, works I, with me, and he's intimidated. Like he can't man, just call yeah, me. Yeah, because the standards are really high, man. Like you know, if I if I do something stupid and mess up, you'll be like, "What are you stupid? Just, you work with me." Just wait, wait for me to do that other tank. I've All never right. kept those fish. I am terrified of it, so I kind of mm -hmm. know what you feel like. Okay, great. But at the same time, you know the basics. I know the basics. You're, you're but... not gonna go out and get like the most fragile fish on the planet. You're not starting with battle shark right there. Okay, you know better, Brian. Now you're just messing nah, yeah, with me. Yeah, now I'm just messing with you. All right, uh, <laughs> next <laughs> up. This guy. Uh, love the channel. Love what you guys do. Yay! I've gotten a ton of information from you guys, and for that, I thank you. Oh, wow. Well, right. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank that's, you so much that's for what watching. We're here for. Thank yeah. you. Uh, my question is why do my African cichlids seem to get more aggressive after a water change? Maybe does, it, does the process just annoy them? Like it's another. It's a weird thing to happen in the place you live, right? If someone came into your house every every week and... Yeah, so I, I don't actually... I'm going to just totally guess on this because I don't really have a, a straight answer for it. If you are... Okay, here's, here's one thing. If you are also rearranging the tank at the same time, that aggression will come out as they try to reestablish... Um, you know, territories because Africans kind of want to have their own territory and they will defend it from the other fish around them. But if you rearrange the tank, everybody gets confused and then aggression gets very oddly dispersed while everybody tries to figure out where the heck they live now. Um, if you are not rearranging the tank, so one thing I've noticed is fish don't know the difference between a poop floating through the tank and uh, a morsel of meaty, meaty food. So in the process of like gravel vacuuming and stuff and doing water changes, you could be kicking stuff up and everybody thinks there's food and everybody wants to eat all the time no matter what. So they may just be like, oh, we're gonna, it's food time. I'm going to eat all the food before everybody else. Excuse me while you get out of my way to eat this poop. <laughs> oh, wait, that's poop. Uh, yeah, so that could be the other thing. But that's that's what I would guess. You know, yeah, you may be irritating them by being in there, and then they're just like, oh, I'm going to defend everything from everyone all the time. But it could be any, any number of things. All right. Uh, so hopefully that helps. Uh, as long as it's entertaining and nobody's getting hurt. Yeah, as long as no one's getting hurt, that's yeah. the important thing. Um oh man really hoping we get tacos for thomas this week i wish man yeah you know i what? purposefully don't eat a big breakfast before i come here hoping that one day i'll show that's up just and they will that's be a foolish move. surprise tacos that's a, that's a foolish move on your part you I should know. always have a full belly just especially for me like yeah yeah they're just not eating i'm not gonna take I, the you know what keeps on happening that. on my way home i have to stop for fast food that's what keeps happening but you like stopping for fast food 
Yeah. That is irrelevant. I would also like homemade tacos. I've been sick this week. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, and I didn't want to make you tacos and accidentally like, sneeze into it or something and give you that. It's not good. No, it's okay. Look, you I'm, you I'm just putting it? the pressure on you because I, I remember what it was like to be on that end. It took and a lot nobody of, was easy on me, Brian. It took a lot of time to get those donuts, though. That that We had weeks and weeks before you actually brought donuts. So you know what? Tacos for Thomas is going to happen. But as we mentioned, I can get my wife on board. She's Mexican. She knows what she's doing in that arena. And she's busy. So I got to get her on board. Once I, I'm not throwing her under the hey bus. I, I didn't make those donuts on my own. That's fair. <laughs> I, I don't want to throw my wife under the bus on this. But at the same time, it's completely her fault. So Please help me. Please make me tacos. Yeah. If right. Bri- Brian apparently can't ask. And I'm I'm desperate for, for like some really nice homemade tacos. We'll see what we can put together for our next bi-weekly Q&A. Sure. Uh, Questions! Okay. Do, do you have any ideas on how to get dry erase marker off of aquarium plastic? Plastic? Yikes. Ugh. Um, some kind of solvent? Just got to be careful with that kind of stuff. Now, dry erase... Maybe this only works on... No, it doesn't work. That's that's permanent marker. Like, if you put permanent marker on a dry erase board, if you then color over it with dry erase marker it's because scrub, It's you, because there's solvent in dry erase. Right. One thing... Good point. One thing you might be able to do is draw a new line over top of the mark and then wipe it off immediately. Right. That might do it because the solvent in the dry erase may... You know, whatever liquid is in it may... I answered a question on our q and It's possible. Yeah, I would say to like try a little bit of nail polish remover or something, but I'd be terrified that it's just too strong and might haze the uh, acrylic or plastic. Yeah. That's a bad, yucky situation. What else do we use? Goo Gone? That's a, that's a crazy strong solvent. Yeah. What's a, what is a mild solvent? Hey, everybody in the chat, what is a mild solvent that you would use to remove that i wish i had i've never R- rubbing alcohol someone says rubbing alcohol might work and that shouldn't it shouldn't be strong enough to uh haze the acrylic or plastic that's actually a great idea that's a good idea it then, comes in different strengths too so you could start with a mild rubbing alcohol and then move all the way up to like a 97 percent if you have to yeah i mean i don't want to like, you can try that and i don't want to promote uh, you know some other uh company on here that, but there's a company that makes those those cleaning pads that you can uh the, the bald guy that cleaned the cartoon bald guy that cleans all the uh he's a mister and he makes things very clean and he uh, he has those magic erase scrub pads maybe that would work because that, that's supposed to work like wash stuff off walls that, and stuff that like might work maybe try that from that the, big, the big bald the big bald cleaning man yeah somebody said hand soap vinegar might work my, my thing with hand soap is hand soap is not a solvent and it's an oil. So you really want to be very careful not to get any uh, soap inside of the tank because that will do a lot more damage than accidentally putting uh, a weak acid like vinegar. Vinegar is actually a great, uh, same with baking powder. The only thing with baking powder, I will say, is if you're putting that on plastic, it, uh, one reason baking powder works so well is because it's also an abrasive. So if you use baking powder, there's a good chance you are going to scratch the living bejesus out of that tank. So I'd probably not use uh, anything that could be an abrasive because you will definitely haze the tank by accident. I know they sell like extra strong vinegar as well for cleaning, cleaning purposes. Vinegar. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you can actually buy that. It's like double strength or whatever. So you can try that. Someone... We, I use it all the time. Yeah. Someone... Especially for tank stuff because it's safe. Yeah. Someone says, uh, ask a business that sell that sells cleaning agents for schools they should know so if you know a business that sells cleaning agents for schools i guess but yeah try yeah i guess what would your top top three be uh i would probably try um rubbing alcohol vinegar and a uh mythical eraser or whatever you called it yes okay fantastic so hopefully that works let us know we'd be curious to know what works so other people can uh maybe Fix their dry erase marker problems. Yeah. And next up, what would be a suitable fish or small amphibian for a five-gallon tank? Trying to redo that tank after the betta died. Rest in peace. From just in case, who is Mr. Taco Man here? Who wants you? He, he's fighting for your tacos hard. So. Thank you for fighting for tacos for Thomas. It is a good cause. Look at me. I need tacos. Um. Okay, so five gallons isn't a ton of volume, so you you want to stick with smaller fish for sure. Uh, I'm a huge fan of endlers. Uh, you could do a pretty cool little um, mix of like endlers and then uh, maybe get some snails in there as well or shrimp. Like a <coughs> neocardina, cardina, card, cardina, cardina, I think it is. Neocardina or cardina shrimp, like um, crystal shrimp or 
sakura shrimp or yellow sakura shrimp whatever they call them um and then for snails like you could do anything from like rabbit snails ah, five gallons might be small for a rabbit snail they get pretty big um i would look at maybe narrate snail that would be a cute little snail to go in there yeah narrate snail Sh little shrimps and some endlers with some live plants very easy life plans. Java moss, Java fern, um, Anubias. Brilliant. Done deal. All right. Uh, too much for a 30 gallon? One flame dwarf garami, one powder blue dwarf garami, one blue garami, one cobalt blue lobster, one dwarf petrocola synodontis catfish, one pit bull pleco, three mandarin shrimp, and one clown killfish. I don't know. I read that like a like a... Clown kill fish? You, I, this one says clown kill fish. Is that the fish that all the clowns are afraid of as opposed to the, yeah, maybe. <laughs> the clown that the fish yeah. are afraid of? Um, it's, it's well stocked for a 30 gallon. Is, is that a nice, is that a delicate way of putting it's probably overstocked? Um, I, I don't like putting cynodonis cats in something that small because they get a decent size. So they'll get cramped over time for sure. Um, you always got to consider how big your baby fish is going to get and whether or not the box you're putting them in is going to uh, potentially stunt their growth and you don't want that. So the Cynodonis, in my opinion, probably shouldn't be in there. Um, I mean, beyond that, it's not, it's not, it's well stocked. I don't think you're, you are necessarily going to have an issue, uh, keeping nutrients and stuff under control as long as you have a decent canister filter and, uh, you stick with your maintenance. But maybe don't put too much else in there. But you're not, it's not terrible. Borderline. If that was a 29 gallon tank, like just thinking of the dimensions <laughs> in my head, that's a lot of fish. If it was a 29 gallon tank, I love it. But, well, 30, because the <coughs> dimensions actually make a difference. Sure. So if they have more floor space, yeah. then. You know, I'm also thinking about the fish's ability to interact with each other in that tank and how much space they actually have. Vertical space for a lot of species makes a lot less of a difference than horizontal. Uh, and yeah, so anyways, you got a lot of fish. Uh, Rosie, Lo I think he knows that. That's why he asked. Like, I think he definitely knows. Like, uh, I think he's got the look, inkling in his mind. Like, I think this is too many. Yeah, no, the thing is, I think also people like, uh, there's lots of Facebook groups and stuff that people are uh, on that, our fish group so they mm. talk back and forth and sure. people will be like this is my tank and then they just get absolutely eviscerated yeah. in the comment section for any number of reasons um yeah. and then those people are like oh i feel bad and then they they are looking for an answer somewhere else because you can never tell who's just like being unreasonable right in the comment section and stuff so yeah no if if when in doubt, ask an expert. Unreasonable people in comment sections? I can't even imagine. Never, How is that possible? Never heard of such a thing. Yeah. Rosie loaches with shrimp. Bad idea? Little shrimp? Probably a bad idea. <laughs> um, if we're talking larger shrimp, you might be okay. Like flower shrimp or, or vampire shrimp or Mexican dwarf crayfish or something. I don't know. Anytime you've got a bottom feeder that's known to... Uh, be carnivorous or omnivorous you're playing with fire that's my official opinion all right that's a good opinion uh all right uh let's do another one here is it possible uh my new black phantom tetras think they are panda cories? they have similar coloring seem to follow them around and copy what they're doing Okay, so uh, something that happens often if uh, schooling fish are involved. So number one, quarries like to school. They like to be together in groups for the most part. Um, and tetras, a lot of small tetras like to school. Uh, they don't even need to necessarily look similar, but schooling fish will often follow other schooling fish. So just to give you an example, if you've got um, a whole whack load of neon tetras, so you got 12, and then you've also got 12 galaxy rasboras there is a good chance they are just going to follow each other around the tank, especially if something happens. So if something big uh, comes right into the tank real fast, those fish are just going to turn into a ball together and move around together, um, even though they're not the same species. The same thing can happen with, uh, you know, a small group of uh, bottom feeding fish on the bottom of the tank and a group of tetras. They could just be like, oh, there's other fish there. Let's just follow them because that's their natural instinct. The other thing is the quarries, if they're on the bottom and you've got sand or whatever, and they're uh, foraging for food and it looks like they're eating, those fish may be like, hey, there's food down there and they're going to go investigate as well. 
fish pick up cues from from other fish they just they they're not uh necessarily concerned about how closely related they are genetically they're just like there might be food down there because those fish are looking like they're eating food down there and then they're just going to go check it out as well or they could be like hey there's a group of fish down there we're a group of fish that likes to be in a group let's go group with those group of fish so yeah i mean they don't even have to be fish i i watched uh, a little i think it was on national geographic where there was an octopus and a grouper working together to flush out fish um, from different spots. What would happen is the octopus has the long arms and they can reach around into all the crevices. And uh, the grouper is watching where all the small fish are going. So the grouper will uh, look around for where the small fish are going and then just stare at the hole that they went in. And then the octopus will be like, all right. So the grouper's like, hey, octopus. And he comes and he kind of like just shoves his arms in every hole he can find. And either he gets a fish because he grabs it or he flushes them out and then the grouper gets to eat it. So they're working together. They're not even closely related at all. Right. But they have learned Teamwork. to work together. They're they're picking up cues from each other. They're like, there might be food. Let's do this. Just another example. I mean, that's a much more fascinating and complex example than Tetris falling around Cory Catfish. But that was a fun fact. Yeah. Anyways. Huh. Speaking, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. And it's a blast. It's really cool. Speaking of fun facts, it's time for everyone's favorite segment. Oh, finally, it's back. Which nobody ever asked for. <laughs> but here it is. All right, so what did Brian learn this week? So as we know, I'm not an aquatics expert or enthusiast. I'm a video person. You are the aquatics expert, but because I've worked with you for several years now in this industry, uh, I find when I'm scrolling through, you know, the Reddit or whatever, and I find something kind of interesting related to aquatics, I go, oh, let me read this because uh, I work in that industry now. Uh, so I, I, yesterday I came across something. I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Pretty pretty weird, but pretty cool. So, um, the Great Barrier Reef okay. in Australia, in case you didn't is know. Is that where it is? <laughs> I know, you probably didn't know that. Hit you up with some knowledge here. Uh, so, okay, we know that, that climate change, global warming is causing Wreaking absolute chaos. Havoc, yes. yeah. uh, but you know what? you know what else is causing absolute chaos in the Great Barrier Reef, like decimating it? Uh, plastic? Probably that too. That's not what the story is yes. about. Crown of Thorn oh my starfish. Yeah. Yep. yep. So for those yep. of you who don't know what Crown of Thorn starfish are, let me let me put it up on the screen. Like if a here starfish had a baby with Satan? It's on the yeah, here, it's on the screen here for you. That's the Crown of Thorn oh, starfish. Wow. So so yep. the, the outer the, like they're spiky and they're toxic when you touch super them. Toxic, super toxic. Super toxic. Super spiky. Uh, now these things apparently are very natural. Like they they, they are all, across all kinds of bear except for the Caribbean. Apparently they're in all kinds of yep. uh, uh, reefs. Uh, that's a natural thing to have there. Uh, the thing is, in the Great Barrier Reef, that their main predator uh, has been uh, overfished, overhunted. Their, their main predator, uh, it's called the uh, the Great Triton Snail. Like a, yes. a giant snail. It is a massive snail that preys specifically on these starfish. And guess what? I have a video to show you guys. Yes! Uh, of, of a snail preying on one of these, on one of these starfish. Uh, just for you guys to watch while, while we talk. So check this out. This is this is one of these um, uh, crown of thorn starfish. This is the great triton snail uh, going for a, a little nibble. Going, going for lunch. in for the kill. So this is what happens on on the great wood. We used to happen on the Great Barrier Reef. It kept the population of these starfish in check. But because people wanted the shells, because people are generally horrible, uh, they overfished them, they overharvested them, and now the the starfish are overrunning the, the reef and decimating it. Absolutely decimating this thing. Uh, so. It's so painful to hear. It is, yeah, no, like <laughs> it's like if it's not one problem, it's another for the for these poor reefs. So that's that's that. That's pretty uh, neat in and of itself. Watching that video, uh, but do you know what humans are doing to try and alleviate the situation? <laughs> do do tell. They are sending. <laughs> they are sending. Or do they make robots? A ranger robots. A ranger bot. They call it. It's called Ranger Bot, and it hunts these starfish and kills them. That's amazing. That's what's being done. The team of researchers. Oh, we killed all the natural predators. Let's just make a, an android do it. What could go wrong? It's it's absolutely crazy. Little Ranger Bot uh, roves along the. Uh, it's a little you know uh, a little Roomba for the ocean floor, and it uh, goes around and hunts these things and uh, is trying to control the population. So, so they're not man controlled. They're self controlled. 
AI driven devices. From, from from what I've read, I, you know, I don't know if they're man controlled. I didn't actually say. I assume they're man controlled. I guess it's not technically a Roomba. So it's a uh, okay. I have, to so, read, well, I have to read more on it. It was a quick quick scan through. Uh, I'm not sure if it's man controlled or, or automatic. I doubt automatic because. You don't just want to put a robot in the ocean and say, "Hey, go kill stuff," and I hope it gets the right things, right? Like it. I think that's what they were uh, starting to do for the lionfish and stuff too. Really? I'm pretty sure they were working on AI and algorithms to uh, uh, put onto um, underwater vehicles, UV, R huh. R O V, remote R C O V. I don't know. Whatever the acronym is. I yeah. can't remember. But um, but yeah, and. I wouldn't be surprised if they were doing the same thing because all you need is software that is capable of recognizing the shape, pattern, color, whatever of starfish. Here, you know what? Kind of on the same subject, and this just goes to show how much of a nerd I am. Um, so uh, if you've ever watched Blue Planet, which if you haven't, you're not should, a true fish fan. You should watch it. <laughs> so not the new one, but the old one. In the Coral Seas section of it, because I own it and I've watched it a thousand times, so I know um there's a yeah the coral seas part there is a, a segment where you see a crown of thorn starfish crawling over an uh a, a species of uh st a small polyp stony coral it was probably a pacillopora or stylophora if i remember correctly and there are these tiny little crabs that live in them called acro crabs that is our what we call them in the industry um, I don't know what their scientific names are. I'm sure there's more than one species. But they're these tiny little crabs. They're like literally the size of my pinky nail. And these starfish are not small. So just to give you reference, that snail that they were, that is a massive snail. These starfish are like huge. They're very big. If you ever see a picture of someone holding it, they're not tiny. These tiny little crabs <laughs> live inside of these uh, corals and the coral provides shelter and um, food for them. And in return, these little tiny crabs will fight off those starfish. Straight up fight them off. They like cut their little, uh, the spikes, they'll cut them. They cut their little oh. feet off from underneath. They like vigorously Brutal. fight back. Wow. So if you want to see a tiny crab fight a <laughs> crown of thorn starfish off of a coral, desperately defending its home, uh, Coral Seas, Blue Planet, it's totally worth it. It's a lot of fun. Let me just uh, write that down. Blue Planet, so I can watch it later. Cra coral Seas. Uh, I, I also yeah i also starfish. love the segment Woo. where they show a coral it's I, I i think it's just um done using i could be totally wrong but i think it's just done using animation but the growth of a staghorn acropora right near the beginning that yep. shows like the cells land which divide and then turn into a coral i have always really appreciated that yeah uh, segment as well i love that i love that that whole dvd set anyways Anyways, uh, yeah, super cool facts. So, um, awesome. Sweet. That's what I learned this week, and I've learned some more cool stuff. And I'm going to go watch that uh, episode it's really later. Cool. Uh, probably right after the stream, actually. Okay. Uh, now, back to the questions. Questions. Uh, can you put betta fish, shrimp, betta fish, shrimp, and Corys in a 25-liter tank? What is the conversion? Uh, 25 liter. I never have this prepped, and I feel S terrible. Seven gallons? 25 gallon? 25 liter, it said? 6.6. .6. Whoa. Nice work, sir. It's about time my brain started yeah. working on the conversions. Um, I probably wouldn't put Corey's in with a beta in a five, six, seven gallon tank. A uh, shrimp you could try, but I guarantee that that beta will eat any small shrimp that will fit in its mouth. And it might try to eat shrimp anyways. You're probably better off with... Um, some cute little like ornamental snails of some type. There are a few different species of nerite snail that are really, really cool looking. Uh, you could try like a dwarf Mexican crayfish. My only thing with anything that's got pincers and betas is that if you've got like a half moon or not even, I guess half moon would be fine, but like a veil tail or any flamboyantly finned betas versus like placat betas, which have short fins, uh, you're just asking for those fins to get torn up. So yeah, I think it's a little a little small for something like even dwarf, like those panacories and stuff. Because yeah, you want to keep them in a little group, and six gallons is not a ton of space. I would probably look at inverts, but just not shrimp. Not small shrimp. A mono shrimp would probably be fine. Something that's going to get uh, some decent size. Those like crystal shrimp and stuff like that, they're just small enough that I'd be worried that that beta might go after them. And even if it doesn't successfully eat them, could just injure them permanently. Uh, is there such a thing as too much 
Filtration? No. All right. Too much flow, yes. Too much filtration, no. <laughs> Is there any way we can send fan mail to you guys? Uh, well, yeah, I mean... Yeah. Just... Do you want to send physical fan mail to us? If if you if you actually... How many of you want to send mail to us? Like, if you want to send us a piece of art or something, like, or a card, or I don't know what you want to send. Not a bomb. You know what I mean? Anything else. If that is something you guys would like us to set up, I will look into having a Dropbox, um, like a P.O. box. Yeah. uh, Specifically for that, so you guys can send us stuff. That is the first time anybody's asked if they could send us something in the mail. So. Yeah, yeah, we don't really know how to respond to that. I mean, yes, that would be lovely. If you want to send via email, then, like, just want to say, give us a shout-out. We can have a... uh, something set up other than the support email so that you can reach out to us on a yes. more casual level. Yeah. Um, but if you want to send us actual stuff or physical letters or something, then I will have a PO box set up just for that. It's a good idea. So just let me know if that is something you guys are interested in and we will look into making it happen. Made wants to send us some uh, Swedish candy. I would love that. I would love that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess that, just I for guess that I'm alone, it's going to happen. Yeah. Box. Just for Swedish candy alone. Everything else is a bonus. Yeah. Everything else, yeah. Sweet. All right, cool. Well, with that said, we'll look into that and uh, keep watching our live Q&As and we will, uh, once that's set up, we can let you know. Yay. Thanks, guys. That's really nice. That's I, Honestly, I'm all, um, I'm yeah. all excited now. Yeah. Uh, is there any... Oh, no, I read that already. Yes, there is. We just talked about that. Uh, how to know if a goldfish is ready to lay her eggs? Oh, I couldn't tell you. You'd have to ask her. Yeah, that's very personal. <laughs> I am not a doctor of goldfish birth giving. Oh, so, okay. That was the, one of the least coherent things I've said in a long time. <laughs> it, 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 my, I don't know if my brain just like uh, transcodes what you have to say. It just made sense to me. Right? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, then you won't, you won't like this next question either. How long does it take for a female sword tail to give birth? Um, From the point where she actually starts spitting out babies, I think it could take up to... Oh, this is honestly me pulling memories out of my skull that could be incorrect, but uh, I think it can take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours for them to release all of the babies that they intend to release once they start giving birth. And I think the gestation for... Um, oh, what was the gestation for live bears? I know, I know we just talked about this too. Was it 48 days? Sure. 60 days? I don't know. I'm having a brain fart on this, so I'm just going to have to get back to you. All right, we're going to move on, unfortunately. Uh, could I put 100 Ember Tetra in a 55-gallon? That'd be a lot of Ember Tetras in a 55-gallon, but with good filtration, you could. I would probably go down to maybe a group of 60, I think is a pretty good number. I mean, they're pretty small. And they would make an amazing little, like, school of fish. But if they don't have enough space and you put a huge number in, they will just occupy the entire tank all the time. So it'll look just like a bunch of... It'll look it'll look more like a cloud of gnats that you're standing in as opposed to a, uh, you know, a, a coherent school of fish. The other thing about schooling fish is um, unless they have a massive space to school in, they won't look like they're schooling, uh, if, especially if you have a ton of them because... While they're relaxed, while there's no threat, they will all kind of be doing a little bit of their own thing, looking for food, foraging, and they will do that in a group. So if they were in a pond the size of, you know, the room that we were sitting in, which you can't tell how big it is, but like a 20 by 20, if you had a tank that was 20 feet by 20 feet by six feet tall, and you had a hundred neon tetras in there, they would always look like they're together, you know, within reason. They'll be traveling that tank together. But um, if you scare them, they will ball up and get very close and move in the same direction, essentially. Sort of like if you were watching a ball of sardines on Blue Planet, <laughs> trying to evade predation. Did they pay you to plug them on this show? On this no, I just really, really enjoy that uh, series, and I've watched it way too many times. I probably just bleed blue now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you put you put enough in there. You're just they're not even going to look like they're a school. Uh, because there's just so many fish and so little space that when, while they're calm, they'll just be off occupying the entire tank. So if you wanted something really spectacular, you need like a 500 gallon tank and like 200 neon tetras, and then you will definitely be able to tell that they are uh, schooling. Awesome. Uh, I want to get back into the hobby, and I'm thinking of either a 50 or 75 gallon low tech planted. Nice. What are the pros and cons of both? Um, okay, so one thing I really like, 
it's a little vague because a 50 gallon, like, do you mean like a 55? That's four feet. So it's like a 75, but uh, not as deep front to back. Do you mean a 50 gallon, like a breeder type tank, which is actually three feet by one and a half, like 18 inches by, you know, 20, I think it's 21 or 22 inches tall. The dimensions like make a difference to me. I like tanks that have more space front to back. Um, so if I was choosing between, let's say a four foot 55, which is 12 inches front to back versus a 75, which is four feet and 18 inches front to back, I would take the 75 over and over and over just because I find aquascaping in that sort of an environment a lot more fun. Um, you can get a lot more depth and dimension in there and it'll feel less like a panel of fish and more like you are staring into a small cutout of a river, lake, pond, whatever. So. But if you're talking um, a 55, which, or sorry, a 50 gallon, which is almost like a 75, but instead of four feet is three feet, um, then it's gonna come down to personal preference and how much money you wanna spend. The price difference between the two uh, is decent. The filtration, um, again, you could probably get away with a smaller filter, et cetera, on a 50 gallon than you would on a 75. The amount of substrate you need will change. So. Uh, I would say the cost of setting up the 75 is going to be in and around 25 to 30% more expensive, possibly higher depending on uh, what kind of filtration and stuff you're getting because the light would have to be longer, um, more plants are involved, so on and so forth. But do you have enough space for a 75? If, if you've got a space that's perfect for a 50 and you'd have to make space in your home for a 75 and you might not end up liking it in the end or whatever. You know, there's lots of considerations, but at the end of the day, I, I personally would probably always go for the bigger tank. But yeah, especially if we're talking uh, the difference between uh, a 55, which is 12 inches front to back versus a 75, which is 18. I would always take the uh, 75 personally. It's just much more fun to work with. Cool. Um, I have Troavasi, Troavasi. Mm-hmm whatever that pronunciation may be. Uh, Chalumba Bay Zebras, which I love the word Chalumba. Uh, Chalumba one. Okay, anyway, so I have Trevovase, Tre Chalumba Bay Zebras, and Masobo Deep, but want another species. What would you recommend? All of those were hard to pronounce for me, by the yeah. way. So extra points I am you, wondering, Nolan, if these are Africans. Because I don't know all species by their name. Now, Nolan, yeah, yeah clarify for us, Nolan, because I know... What? Give me give me the last one, the uh, MS Masobo. That is Maso, M -S -O -B -O, deep. Masobo deep. I don't know if that's a... Yeah, uh, Nolan, I know you're watching because you thought we skipped your yeah, question. Yeah, totally is Africans. Oh, yeah, it know. sounded like African names. Uh, I, okay, here, here's the thing. Um, picking fish is so subjective that... I hate recommending specific fish to people. Uh, I try to avoid it at all costs, but sometimes people ask like, what fish fit in this size tank and I'll tell them what I actually think is appropriate. Uh, but this is what I'm gonna say. Uh, find, if you're trying to keep it like relatively cohesive, like all fish from the same lake, et cetera, I don't know if they're all from the same lake, I'm just supposing then I would just look at what is readily available to you in your area or through websites that you're comfortable ordering livestock from and uh, deduce from there what uh, you know fish you think would be good to mix in. Um, there's lots of things to consider like smaller African species versus larger African species. Some uh, African cichlids uh, are going to want to hold tighter to rock work or hide more often. Like for instance, lulubi tend to always be hiding or in and around rock work. So if you have them in with something like uh, larger like peacocks or something like that, they don't necessarily have issues with each other because they're occupying completely separate spaces. Um, but yeah, have a look at what you actually have access to and what fits your the like color theme of your tank or <coughs> what is the missing link in your opinion in terms of maybe shape or pattern or color or behavior or where they occupy the, uh, themselves that are what part of the tank they would like to occupy more and then kind of figure out uh what speaks to you and what's in your budget and just go with it man that's what i would do i uh, know Re research is so much fun like no one says he was thinking of El elongatus elongatus are really elongatus. cool yeah that's not a bad option. I don't think that's a bad option at all. If you're thinking of it, it means you have a preference or like some kind yeah. of... Yeah, so I'd go for it if it's acceptable. Yeah. 
I also, I'm a big fan. Again, I don't know what lake they're from. I'm not an African cichlid expert, but I'm a huge fan of like Julie Ornatus. Very simple fish. I like um, uh, Lamp Lulupi, I think they are. Little yellow guys. I love fish like that. They're, they just, they're so different in shape from the other cichlids that they're uh, just a pleasure to have in the tank. It just breaks up the uh, theme that's already going on, but they still have striking color. They love the same conditions and they, they work well with them. So anyways, cool. I digress. All right, next up, and just as a reminder, we uh, do go through these questions sequentially. So if you get here early and you ask a question, we just go in order of the questions that come in. Uh, we don't skip questions intentionally anyway. Uh, we just go in order. So if you haven't heard uh, a, a, an answer to your question yet, it's because we haven't gotten to it, just so you know. Uh, so the best chance you have for future Q&As is show up for the 11, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, and ask a question right at the beginning. Best chance you have. Or uh, Super Chat. We, we always hit Super Chat right away just as a thank you because uh, anything you guys can do for us to help uh, keep this show a running, uh, we sincerely appreciate. So we'll also uh, take Super Chats as priority. Yeah. yeah, we will bump those to the front if you Super Chat us and support us in that way. Uh, so next up in our sequential order. Uh, so my electricity was out for a few days. Uh, it came back on last night. How big of a water change should I do? I'm thinking about 50%. Would that be good? So I guess for a few days the, there was no filtration. If you have a test kit, it would be very easy to determine the amount of waste that's in the water currently, especially in terms of ammonia and stuff like that. Um, the first thing I would let happen, oh, that's tough. If you've had any circulation in the tank, whether or not you're moving the water yourself or circulation through the filter, uh, there's a good chance that your bacteria in within three days is probably not dead or anything like that. So I would let the tank first try to stabilize a little bit. Once the power comes back on, the heater is going to come back on if you have one. Uh, circulation in the tank is going to come back and everything should start to regulate again. Uh, so I would give it at least a few hours of coming back into where it should be and then doing the water change unless you have fish that are showing immediate signs of distress. So gasping at the surface, um, breathing very hard, uh, lethargy, anything that seems really unnatural for how your fish normally behave, then you want to do a water change immediate, immediately. 50% uh, is a good place uh, to be. Going more than that can be a little bit difficult. So I would do 50%, give it an hour and do another 50 if they're still showing those signs of um, distress. Just make sure the temperature of the water in the tank as it currently is, is uh, you know, the water change you're doing should be the exact same temperature. You wanna try not to cause any more shock than they've already uh, potentially gone through um, or cause any more distress if they are in distress. But if they are showing signs of acting normally, just let the tank come back into its own and then uh, test the water and do, do a water change based on the values you're seeing on your tests. Good luck. Man, power outages are hella stressful. It's a bummer, yeah. Crazy stressful. Uh, didn't you get a generator just for that purpose? <laughs> I got a 10,000 watt generator because I have aquariums. Yeah. Better to be prepared if you can, right? Well, how ridiculous would it be if, like, I had... I'm in an area where there are power outages. It's not like... And here in Nova Scotia, like, the storms frequently knock power out anyway. Like it's... I lose shingles all the freaking time. Yeah. I've, I've learned how to re-shingle a roof, just fixing my roof. Oh. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I got to be prepared. I know power outages are going to happen. I've got two options. One is battery backup. I have too many tanks for that currently. I don't have solar panels on my house. So that's unrealistic, to say the least. Uh, so I've just got a gas generator, uh, powerful enough to handle all of the aquariums that we're going to be with the size of those aquariums you're going to need yeah i'll need a second <laughs> at some point uh, my family's going to be like we need the generator the power unit and i'll be like well sorry, sorry the tanks <laughs> took it i guess i'm going to go buy another 10,000 watt generator priorities yeah favorite tank mate for a beta tank i love snails for beta tanks that may seem really silly but i they're so different than a beta and um i think they can be really cool and they're a lot of fun to watch. And they're just something else in the tank moving around. For the same reason, I really think starfish are cool in uh, saltwater tanks. They're just totally different than the fish in there. So yeah. I, I like having different inverts. But yeah, it's cool. Uh, okay, next up. What are your thoughts on Chinese algae eaters? I think you mentioned them earlier, did you not? Uh, they do a pretty good job and they're small. They get big. They get very big, a lot bigger than people realize they get. And they can get pretty aggressive and pretty useless with size. Like they're not as great of a algae eater at size as they were when they were smaller and they are mean. So I don't like them. Not for most tanks. If you have really big tanks, they're fine. But 
Not my first choice. All right. Bristle nose pleco. Yeah. Uh, how do you get rid of hair algae? It's slowly growing on my tank, but it's creeping its way around. So algae eaters are an option, which we have a ten, top 10 ways to combat algae. Do you have that video handy? Yeah, I can grab that for us. So we'll throw that video to you. It goes over some different reasons why algae pop up, or why algae can pop up and different ways to combat it. Um, uh, uh, one of my favorite ways to deal with uh, hair algae, especially like blackbeard algae or, um, yeah. Uh, Blackbeard algae and hair algae are just double dosing Seachem Flourish Excel. Uh, they don't tell you to do it on the bottle, but if you do a quick search online, you will see that it is a commonly known uh, solution for, for algae and uh, it can be quite effective. But if you do it incorrectly or overdose beyond that, you could bring harm to your fish. So you got to be careful. Uh, beyond that, that top 10 ways to deal with algae goes over most of the things I would tell you right now. I just linked it in the video in the chat, so you have that there. I'm loving the chat right now, by the way. We have people going on about uh, the comments and how they, th they think we skipped, but we didn't. Yeah. And someone said, Brian's just one man try trying to keep all the questions. Just one and so man. I'm like, movie trailer oh! voice. One, and now everyone, everyone's going through doing the movie trailer voice. One man. Hundreds of comments. I love it. One man. Hundreds of comments. And then someone, then, um, someone says... The Chinese algae eater, as if they're saying this. Thomas called me useless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that's great. good stuff, guys. Sorry, Chinese algae. Oh, uh, good stuff, but you're useless. You're not my favorite. All right, let's see. Next question: uh, Is lava rock good for beneficial bacteria? Lava rock? Yeah, uh, yeah it is very porous. Um, people often use it for ponds and stuff as a bio media. Are there better things if you're trying to use it as filter media? There are much better things. Um, in this day and age, we've got uh, really interesting uh, materials. A lot of them are ceramic based and, and other stuff that are so porous for their size that it is almost incomprehensible how much surface area they actually carry. So um, for that reason, I, I don't waste f space in my filter with uh, subpar uh, medias. I know that sounds super elitist, but just if the amount of space I'm taking up, like the amount of space you have in your filter is finite right, unless you buy a bigger filter. So the amount of space you wanna to allocate to beneficial bacteria, if you've only got X amount of space, if you put a media that has an insanely high surface area and porosity, it makes a lot more sense to do that and have potentially 10 or hundreds of times more surface area for bacteria than it would to throw in a subpar media like dollar store scrubbies or uh, traditional bio balls or you know, um, lava rock then for the money I'm saving, I'm not actually getting very much benefit. Like there's a reason those medias are expensive. It's not just because aquarium companies are like, yeah, <laughs> pay this. Um, no, there's, it usually has to do with their effectiveness and the process it, it takes to make them and so on and so forth. So, All right. Uh, we have a super chat from Yay! Mark's Aquatic. Thank you, Mark's Aquatic. Yeah, thanks so much. We really, again, we, we really mean it. Like uh, every little bit it, helps. It makes and... a massive difference for us yeah. to, to continue being able to bring like wicked awesome content to you, which by the way, we have some really cool stuff coming. Yeah, we've already started moving heavy things into your basement yes. and so it has begun. And uh, the 100K giveaway that's coming, by the way. Yes. This well, is we'll, a sponsor. We'll Anyways, well, after going. Mark's thing, we'll, we'll tell you a bit more about that. Okay, so good morning, Brian and Thomas. Good morning. Hi. What would be the best fish food for my platinum, blue, polar convict, parrot, and blood parrot fish that bring more brighter color? Like it makes their colors brighter. There are lots of options. Um, blues are a little bit harder to deal with than things like red. Uh, red and yellows and stuff like that are very easy because any uh, food high in carotenoids and uh, a few other products like that are going to do a very good job at bringing extra color. Um, if a food for the most part has color enhancing written on the label, you can expect that it's going to be enhancing uh, reds and yellows and stuff more than anything else. A lot of blue coloration in fish is uh, metallic and it is very hard to make that any more metallic than it already is. It's kind of inherent in the fish, but sometimes what can help is if the fish has any other colors, uh, brightening those colors up will offset the blue or, and contrast it. Um, anyways, so one of my favorite foods uh, and lines of foods that I've been feeding for a while now is tropical. Um, tropical is uh, a food that's made in Poland. Uh, it's a Polish company. 
and the quality of the food is incredible. And for the price point, I am actually surprised with how good it good it has been turning out to be. I was a little skeptical when we first got it. It's a massive line of foods. They have yeah. foods for everything, not just fish, parrots, uh, small animals. Uh, pfft, list goes on. We have the, um, we have like their entire food collection at your house, like even for do. like guinea pigs and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like I don't even have guinea pigs yet, but I might be getting rabbits. We'll see. Nice. Anyways. Um, they have color enhancing foods, uh, various types of foods in pellet forms and flake forms. So depending on what your fish prefer, I would heavily, heavily recommend looking at tropical. I'm also a massive fan of uh, Hikari food brands. I think they do a really good job. Again, anything color enhancing labeled is gonna do a great job. Um, and then you can also look at, uh, what other foods do I really like? I mean, there's so many, but I'm trying to drill it down to specific things is tough. Uh, Tropical Hikari, who who else, who else, who else? New Life Spectrum people like a lot. Um, and they do have, I think, super red formulas and stuff for bringing out uh, color. Those are, if I'm gonna give you my top three, those would probably be it. Again, I'm only gonna recommend foods I have practical experience with. There are right, all yeah. kinds of foods out there that people talk about like, uh, Grand Sumo and stuff like that. I don't, I, I, if I haven't used it personally and especially haven't uh, had practical results with it or experience with it, I'm not going to tell you to go use it because I don't know. I, I will tell you what I've used and have had good experience with. Um, although I have heard good things about brands like Grand Sumo. I just I haven't used it, so I can't give you a recommendation. Fair enough. Yeah. One of our one of our sons here, Mia D, she says, I use Tropical. Yay, I'm not the only one. No, Tropical, <laughs> honestly, Tropical is awesome and it's, huge i think in europe and uh i think it's only more recently been adopted in north america maybe the last 10 years or so um and in canada it's even more recent probably the last three years okay yeah uh so mark's aquatic thank you so much for for that by the way and i've linked some of those foods that he talked to the hikari the tropical or uh, the, the the line i've i've link the lines of food in the chat there so you guys can check them out if you want to kind of see what they offer and and all the different uh, varieties that are available to you uh next up we have christopher algroy i hope i said that right and i'm already googling because that is not a tank we sell uh in north america uh, okay so yeah he asked what's your opinion on the jewel 30 gallon tank uh tom's gonna have a quick look here because uh he just wants to make sure he's thinking of the right one uh but thank you so much uh christopher for that question um Let's see what he can come up with here. Yeah, I guess like in North America, we don't really... I guess Jewel's really a European... It is, yeah. ...brand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so every, every now and then we get questions on, you know, uh, what do you think about Jewel? And I know I know Thomas has some... No, the tough part is they have different, um, like, levels of aquarium. Like, they have the VO and they've got uh, the Rio. And I, I don't know necessarily exactly what one you are referring to. Jewel record. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure. What I will say is for my limited experience with uh, European aquariums, because I don't have a ton of experience, but I do know people who live in Europe who uh, work with different aquatics um, brands and stuff. I haven't heard uh, bad things necessarily about Jewel. Um, uh, I have a relative, I believe, that has a Jewel aquarium kit in and around the 20 gallon uh, range. Uh, when I was in Poland, I saw it and it was a great little tank. Um, as long as they're giving you all the basics, like a filter, a heater, you can't really go wrong. It's, it's, it's the, tough. He said it's the Lido model, I suppose. Lido? Lido, yeah. Like that guy right there. Yeah, I believe that's a, an all-in-one little aquarium kit. And um, I, if I was going to get a all-in-one aquarium kit and I was in Europe, I would probably lean towards Jewel uh, based not only on the fact that they look really nice, but I, I haven't heard anything bad about Jewel. I've heard positive things. The only other brands uh, that I am really familiar with, and I don't know if they make <coughs> aquariums, are uh, ooh, J, 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 JBL. J JBL has some really nice stuff. They make all kinds of aquarium stuff. Um, obviously, I'm a huge fan of Eheim, but they're they're not the least expensive thing out there. So if you're looking for a smaller tank that's a little bit more budget-friendly, Jewel is definitely the way to go. And Aquil. Aquil, I, I think, make pretty solid tanks. I've had the pleasure of having one in person and having a look at it. But uh, no, like I said, if it's a good little kit that's got everything you need to get started, 
it, they look really nice and it's in your budget, I think the Jewel is probably a perfect choice to start off with in terms of uh, a small all-in-one aquarium. Looks pretty sharp. And like, they do look and really the, nice. And looking at these ones, like look at here, like the stand is smaller than the actual tank, which I haven't seen a lot of uh, in what we've done. At yeah, least. yeah, like, pedestal tanks. Yeah, yeah. I do like pedestal stands for some tanks. I also really love the flush look. But it, they are, they're captivating. Like, they're it's, nice. They're interesting. very slick tanks. I'll tell you right now that one of the tanks that uh, um, I'm a big fan of as well, which I think is right out of Europe, is um, uh, Aqua Atlantis. They make some super slick tanks. Super slick. If you haven't seen them, I don't know if they make uh, all-in-one systems. They probably do. But uh, have a look at Aqua Atlantis. So Aqua Atlantis is one word. The A at the end of Aqua is the A in Atlantis. So it's it's not Aqua and then Atlantis. It's Aqua Atlantis. <laughs> but have a look. Uh, you'll be seeing some Aqua Atlantis stuff very soon. Yes. And you may be impressed. I, I'm pretty freaking impressed. <laughs> impressed how heavy it was. Okay, yeah, so, seriously. Um, now, uh, before we continue on to some questions, I think now's a good time to remind people that we are very shortly, hopefully, going to be doing a massive giveaway. Insane. Massive giveaway. So uh, for those of you who haven't heard yet, I know we talked about it on a past Q&A. &A. We have a, a, an official video coming out this week just to kind of <coughs> announce it to the rest of our subscribers. Uh, but for all of you guys who join us live here, we want to give you guys a, a little sneak peek into some of the stuff we're working on here. So I think we're currently at like uh, 85K subscribers, uh, which is great. Uh, our goal... Uh, is 100k we can't wait to get there we're very excited for it and uh, to kind of celebrate that milestone we thought well what can we do to show our appreciation to all these people who are watching our vids and, and joining us on the Q&A's so Thomas uh, has been putting in a lot of legwork trying to uh, amass a huge amount of things to give away yes at once we hit that 100k mark so it's not going to be now you can't enter anywhere right now but once we hit 100k that'll trigger our giveaway uh and then we'll, we'll give you guys instructions on how you can enter it'll be like the kind of where you can like uh, enter multiple times get a ton of different yep. it. uh, it's going to be uh the odds of winning are pretty great when it in terms if of you, giveaways yeah so my goal and i'm not there yet i will <laughs> say but um my goal was to get 100 separate prizes so that we could have essentially a hundred draws, right? Yeah. So your odds of winning, this is probably bad math, but if there's a hundred prizes and a hundred thousand subscribers, your odds of winning are one in a thousand, which is really low when you like, like really good odds. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, no, yeah, that's extremely good odds yeah, for yeah. really high chance of winning really low amount of people per, per prize. Like if you think about it. Yeah, and not just that, but the prizes are pretty dope yes they they actually are like none of these prizes are are piddly like they're all pretty substantial actually i i was really uh lucky in that pro clear whom if you don't uh remember on our mega build i used a pro clear um four in one sump on that system uh, i've used uh pro clear is the one uh, is the company that makes the fragfuge reef sump that uh i designed um, in, con in kind of it's a take on one of their other sumps. I, they just made a bunch of modifications. And your your signature colors. sump. My signature sump. Um, anyways, uh, my good friend over there, Nick, uh, he was very, very uh, lucky to us, graciously willing to give away a 53-gallon acrylic cylinder aquarium, which is the aquarium, the stand, the canopy, and sump filtration. And that is uh, valued at somewhere around twenty two hundred dollars US, so two thousand two hundred bucks. Yeah. And somebody's just gonna get one of those tanks in black or white, whatever they choose. Yeah. Just ship to them for nothing. Just for free. Just, just for yours. Free. Just for being a subscriber of ours, because we we really appreciate it that much. And so we're we're putting out a, like I said a video later this week that Thomas kind of goes over some of the other yeah. prizes that we've gotten so far. Uh, that but is yeah. that is probably right now like the most substantial prize. Yeah. But there are so many prizes that aren't far behind that. Yeah, and I mean like tons of stuff. Uh, you know, in, in addition to that, we're giving away like a thousand dollars in in uh, Big Al's gift cards like, uh, to the yep. Big Al's Pets .com. So if you guys want. Uh, if there's anything you needed, there's a thousand bucks in gift cards. Yeah, there. there's high-end uh, LED lighting, yeah. pumps, uh, all kinds. Of, honestly, all kinds of stuff. So the the only thing is uh, that um, we have to get to 100k. 
<laughs> that's kind of the yeah. only that's the so only help thing. us get there yeah anything you guys can do uh, like I said we're putting out a video but share our channel let people know hey there's a giveaway at 100k and you know let people know that there's uh, not just our videos but maybe that, uh, that other incentive to actually subscribe to us uh, and we want to get there we're really excited we want to get a, that silver play button I, I do I can't wait to see that I'm, and hold it it's, it's just like what, what we started this like three years ago yeah, uh, four years ago. Four years ago. Four years it, ago. It'll have, it's just like that benchmark when I for start, most YouTube when, creators where they're like, where you actually get recognition from YouTube. Yeah, yeah. When I started, when I first started working with you, when I, I showed up on my first day and I said, hey, this is the guy you're doing videos with. We had 12 subscribers on the YouTube channel. Working hard, hardly working. Yeah, so uh, we're up to 85K now, getting to 100. Uh, now, so uh, we have people asking, uh, William Jansen, uh, thank you for that super chat, by the way. I saw you question earlier, I saw you ask earlier, and we were going to get to it. Uh, can everyone join or Canada only? Now, Canada and the US, anyone in Canada, Canada or the US can join. Outside of that, uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't believe that's going to be an option for, you know, if we have people in, in Indonesia or Sweden or whatever, uh, that's going to be a, a, a tough call. You can still enter. We are actually working on some prizes <laughs> that will be international. So uh, if you are international and you join um, the giveaway, we'll have to see if there's a way on the platform for the giveaway to uh, signify that you're international so that you can be signed up for that batch of prizes only that can actually be done internationally yeah just unfortunately that's kind of the reality of, of, of these things right yeah, it's, it's it, like if you're based in the u.s or canada it's kind of tough to to run these things internationally because it's just yeah. yeah you wouldn't believe how many give like uh giveaways and prizes and stuff i'd want wanted to win from companies but it's like usa only i'm like i'm right above you yeah or even in canada like yeah. like quebec if you live in quebec you can't win anything anything ever yeah. their laws are not yeah, not good. Anyways. <laughs> I, I love that bubbly pumpkin studios, like in Wayne's voice. It will be mine. Oh, yes. <laughs> it will be mine. I love it. Uh, okay, Derek uh, Ellis. Thank you for that super chat. Back to the questions because Derek uh, was so nice to uh, to get uh, get us a super chat here. Uh, I'm currently in the process of getting an aquascape going in a long 30-gallon. Nice choice. What beginner small colorful fish would you recommend? Ooh. For Derek. Um, if you want something that schools, I am... Mm, it's tough. Actually, the flame tetras that or ember tetras that uh, somebody brought up earlier would be a pretty good choice. Uh, I I really also like um, white clouds, which are super easy to keep. The, they don't even in a lot of cases need a heater. They don't mind cooler water. Um, I also really like just your absolute staple neon tetra. They are super bright and beautiful. That's another great option. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, Dan Gray with another super chat. Thank you so much, Dan. Sweet. Uh, uh, no questions, but your videos are my favorite, so happy to support in Yay! any way. Thank you. Dan, that that's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks so much. That's wow. Yay. Really appreciate that, guys. Um, okay, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, I have a 20 gallon tank that houses five guppies. Aha. One baby res, R-E-S? Red-eared slider. There it is. I have an, an Acumon Quiet Flow 20. What kind of filter upgrade would you recommend? I hope that red-eared slider is not R-E-S. What is R-E-S? It better not be a turtle. In a 20 gallon? No, well, that's not big enough. Not even, not even like a close. little bit. And the other thing is, if it's got a hang on, that means it's all water. Unless it's a tank with a half wall and then the hang on's there. I don't really know. Let me know. Do you mean red eared slider? We gotta we gotta have a conversation about this. <laughs> a bigger conversation. Yeah, no, it's just like, there are starter kits for turtles if it is red eared slider. There are starter kits for turtles, and uh, they do come in like a twenty long format with a half wall, so you can put a hang on filter on it. Um, but for a red eared slider, that tank won't last very long. Like we're talking a few months, six months tops before you're gonna need something bigger if you're giving that turtle everything it needs. So, um, yeah. I just, I'm just curious because if it is something else, then I can go on a separate tangent entirely and talk differently about the question. Right. Um, yeah, no, he's not answering any kind of, with any kind of clarity. Uh, all right. Uh, yes, let's, maybe later. Maybe later. Let's try, uh, let's try another one here. Uh, hopefully I don't lose my place. For a filter upgrade in general. Oh yes, okay. Canister filter. I'm a huge fan of canisters. There are lots of options out there for canisters. My all time favorite although not the most user friendly because it doesn't have baskets and a lot of the modern features that uh, more expensive canister filters have. I love the Eheim Classic Series canisters. They are super basic. 
They work extremely well. They have replacement parts for literally... I've never heard you say that everything, before. Never. For every part, you could literally buy all the parts and build the canister. It would cost more, but you could do that. Like, So you're, you're making a pretty solid choice with a, a classic series. Although, like I said, there's lots of different brands out there. Um, another really easy one to work with is the Cobalt EXT canister. Yeah. Anyways, yes. Cool. Uh, next up, another super chat from Dan Danielle. Yes! Thank you so much, Danielle. Uh, I really enjoy your guys' channel. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I recently acquired a 150-gallon acrylic aquarium, and I can't choose between a reef tank or a planted tank. Now, there's no real question here, but I'm assuming she's uh, looking for your input. Okay, so... Here's the thing. They are very different, but also very similar. Um, it is less expensive, in general, to set up the planet tank even if you get injected CO2. Uh, that said, I personally find planted aquariums more difficult than reef aquariums. Um, reef aquariums come with uh, extra challenges in terms of you need to learn how to mix salt into water, which is very easy. Uh, they make test kits for all the important elements you're gonna uh, test for and be dosing in a saltwater aquarium. Planted tanks, it, most of them are available, easily available. Some of them can be harder to get a hold of. Uh, and I just find corals, for the most part, to be more robust and a little bit more tolerating than a lot of plants can be. Although there are very easy plants to keep as well, like Anubias and stuff like that. Um, I also really like the color that you can get in a reef. Uh, yeah, another massive consideration, honestly, though, like if just with saltwater, the fish are brighter uh, and more colorful. They're more exotic looking. Um, and then obviously the corals as well, which are super alien if you don't spend a lot of time staring at corals. They're in insanely fascinating. Uh, here's something to consider though. A reef will take way longer to grow in unless you fill it with coral, which will cost a ton of cash. But if you start with frags and stuff, it'll be uh, relatively affordable to do and it'll just take a really long time. We're talking like two to five years before it's gonna look filled in. Your planet tank, that you started last month could look filled in within three months. The completely overgrown, depending on what plants you put in there. So, you know, it really depends. The other thing is you can put a lot more fish in a planted aquarium than you can in a reef aquarium. Saltwater fish just, they don't have the same density in population in a specific area um, that you would have with like freshwater fish. Freshwater fish are used to living closer together in larger numbers. Uh, it's just harder to do that with salt water. Anyways. Now, uh, she uh, she mentioned that she ran out of characters in her super chat here. Uh, so her the ending was, I've had both already, but my biggest gripe is calcified algae on acrylic material. Yeah, it's a thing. <coughs> you got to just use uh, acrylic safe scrapers to get it off. <laughs> it's tough. Acrylic, eh? It's great, but also scratches. Oh, it has its drawbacks. Even with planet tanks, you're going to still suffer that. You'll still get algae on the glass. It'll happen. It'll just be different algae and take less time. Alrighty. So thank you so much, Danielle. We really, really appreciate the support with that super chat and hopefully he was able to give you some insight there. Yeah. Uh, next, another super chat. You guys, this is, uh, this the, is yeah, great. You're, making you guys are amazing. Uh, Monk of Crunks Fish and Gaming. I want to buy a large tank and transfer two of my tanks into that one. I have no room to set it up and run it before taking down the other two. How can I make this happen? You're going to live uncomfortably for a few minutes. <laughs> By that, I mean like a week. Okay, so one thing, you, you what you really need to do is uh, take the time to move the two tanks you have. I know you say you have no room. Even if you have to put it in the like those tanks in the middle of the room for a few days so you can set the other tank up, get everything uh, kind of situated in place. And if you can cycle it first, that's awesome. You don't have to, but... Uh, you, the easiest thing to do is get those tanks moved out of the space, get the new tank into the space, get everything set up on it, even run it for a little bit so that everything's got water circulating through it. Um, you know, after it's been running for 24, 48 hours, you know, everything's perfect. Then uh, you can move the other two fish tanks together into that one. You'll want to take all of the biomedia out of the filters from those two tanks and put it into the new filter on the new tank. Uh, if you're using the filters from the two smaller tanks for the bigger one, you can just move them directly over. Um, from that point, save all of the water from those two tanks for that bigger tank, which means you may have to have separate buckets to take the water out of that tank that you've already got everything running. I'm assuming the situation where you fill the other tank first is if you bought a new filter and everything for it as well. 
um, then you would remove enough water from it to mix the water from those two tanks into that tank along with the livestock. And uh, nice, easy, comfortable transition. Make sure all the water temperature is the exact same. It's, it's not going to be difficult if you do it like that. Great. So, Monk of Crunks, Fish and Gaming. Thanks so much. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, Jesus Ontiveros. One dollar. That's chat. it? Well, no question. Thank you! Thanks for the... Yeah, no, appreciate Man. that. Seriously. That was important! Yeah, that's really, okay. that's really awesome. Thank you. Um, next up, another super chat um, from Yeah Crazy. Yeah Crazy. I have a Pleco tank, so lots of filtration with high flow from hang on the back filter. What can awesome. I, what can I do to lower flow to add top swimming fish? Uh, you have to put physical objects in front of where the flow is coming out of the filter to break that flow up. So uh, plastic plants can work for that extremely well. Any plants that go onto the surface and are relatively bushy, so stem plants work well, um, directly in front of that filter. So what'll happen is all the flow coming out of the filter will hit the leaves and kind of disperse in all directions. So it'll be, you, you're not slowing the flow down at all, you're just breaking it up so it's less direct. So you're taking the laminar flow that's coming out of the filter and turn, turning it into just a very widespread um, flow. So it's just, it's just a lot gentler, but that's what I would do. Any object, it could be rock, uh, although I find it doesn't break it up as well as plants. Plastic plants work just fine if you don't want to do live plants. Awesome. Thank you so much, by the way. Uh, Christopher Algroy, again, uh, he's super chatted with us again. Thank Yay! you so much, man. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. What predatory fish would you put in the jewel tank? 30, Ooh. I think it was 30. 30 gallons ain't a lot of space for predators. Would it be 30 liters? 30 gallons, because it's a European, so it would probably be. It might be 30 liter. Who knows? I'm assuming gallon. I could be totally wrong. Um, Predator. Uh, maybe pea puffers. Yeah, I think you're going a little on the brack. I think they're brackish. They might be a little on the brackish side. But pea puffers are small and they're predators and they're cute as heck. Oh no, I guess they go in planted tanks, so maybe they're not. Just look up pea puffers. I can't give you all the details on pea puffers, but <laughs> look them up. They're awesome. They're super cute. Lots of fun. A little bit specialized husbandry. They like to eat snails. Good option. Cool. Uh, another super chat from Apex Fizz. Damn. Thank you so much, Apex Fizz. Really, really. Uh, I noticed my 50-gallon fresh tank started to get stress cracks. Yikes. Yikes. I have a spare 30-gallon for only four small fish, but it's empty. What do I do? That's a pickle. Hmm. So wait, you only have four small fish <coughs> total, even in the 55, or you've got a 30 gallon with four false small fish and you've got a 50 gallon full of other fish. I'm assuming the 30 gallon, it says, it, but it's empty. The, the I think the 30 gallon's empty, I'm assuming. So, so let's go with that assumption that he's got four. Just, mm -hmm. your fish can live uncomfortably in a 30 gallon for a few days. It's a lot safer than that tank blowing on you. But like, don't, don't, don't put them in the 30 and then just forget about it for a while. Like, no, take yeah, care of the issue. Get and... a new 50 gallon, but just take everything off the 50 gallon and move it over to the 30 unload even the filter and stuff um obviously take uh you know as all of the water from the 50 and put that in the 30 to get it started you know just move everything over just for the time being you don't have to necessarily take all of the decorations but just some uh you can even leave it bare bottom as long as you've moved the filter and everything else the heater etc over but yeah get that tank the heck out of your house before it explodes stress cracks are no joke that is an expensive, expensive uh, emergency if something goes wrong there. Yeah. Take care of it. Uh, all right. Um, shall we wrap it up there? Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, everyone uh, who's been waiting to have their question answered, uh, it's always a bummer for us to not be able to get to everyone's questions. Uh, we really, really want to, but you know, we, we have a lot of people here asking questions and it's hard to get to everything. Uh, so again, the best advice I can give you guys, uh, we, we do these these every other Saturday. So next week we won't, but the week after, bi-weekly, we will be doing these. Uh, so show up at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and put your question in the chat. And so it's top top of the chat for us and we'll, we'll get to it. 
Uh, but unfortunately, we've run out of racetrack on this one. Yeah, we even went a little over today. We, we went uh, quite a bit over. Yeah, usually we limit these to an hour, but we're almost an hour and a half. So, uh, guys, again, sorry to all you guys. I know, like me and D, I know you've been uh, dying to get yours answered. Uh, show up in in in, uh, in two weeks' time and and join us right on time, and we'll we'll hopefully get to it. And again, thank you to everyone who sent us those super chats. Uh, yeah, that honestly makes a huge difference for us. Yeah, it really does. So we can't we can't thank you guys enough for that for all your support uh, and for all of you guys in general. Thank you so much for for joining us for these and watching all of our other videos as well uh help us get to that 100 uh, 100k mark yes i want to give you you don't know how bad i want to give away all this stuff like yeah. i get excited seeing all of the stuff that's come in some of it uh they send directly to me some of it's at the head office but just every time i get a new person on board like a new company and they tell me what they're giving me i like oh i get so excited to give it away to you guys because i think you guys are going to absolutely love it it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun it's going to be nuts so uh, anything you guys can do to help us uh, spread the word there sharing our videos telling people on forums on reddit on social wherever you can share our stuff uh, to help get uh, more more eyes on our channel would be very helpful to us and yep. and the more people we have the more awesome things we'll be able to do exactly uh, so uh, that that help would be great uh we did just this week we released a, a, another video uh for those of you who use uh, the python no spill clean and fill system thomas had a, a handy little video showing you how you can upgrade that to make it uh, even more convenient uh, easier to work with I've just linked that in the chat so if you haven't seen our latest video check that out it's in the chat there uh, next week we'll have more react coming out I know yep. people people love our react series as well and they're probably wondering where those are so uh, check out our, our react video this uh, coming out this week and our official sort of announcement saying hey we're giving stuff away that video is coming out next week as well so check that out um, yeah I guess that's about it from me um, Thanks so much again for joining us and, and all the support, guys. And uh, anything uh, left that you want to maybe say? I don't know. It's not like you usually have anything to say at the end of these. But if you did, what would that be? Let's uh, let's mix it up. And instead of my regular thing, I will say, keep on tanking. Wait a minute. That, uh, yeah, that was it. Okay. Good. Yeah.